inside Holiday Dock as we'll be right back here in just a moment. All right, so welcome back here to Raleigh, North Carolina with myself, Corey Dunn, alongside Holiday Dock here, the 2011 Major League Gaming Pro Circuit here for Call of Duty Black Ops. Optic Gaming going up against Influence here on the main stage here on the first day uh, here on Friday, the pool play day. The pool play day? The pool play day. As uh, right now, our next matchup is going to be on Search and Destroy on Havana. As uh, we'll take a look here, you know, one of the things that I've noticed here at this event is some of the different types of boosts that we've seen uh, come into play. Madcast, one of them, they're uh, promoting that new MLG controller for yeah, the uh, Xbox 360. Um, I had the opportunity, to, it, you know, one of the things that I've seen in my industry uh, from the PC side of things is seeing different mouses have different weights and you, you have different abilities to change the weight of it. Uh, they're here with the Madcast controller, you can change the weight, you can change the, the, uh, the sticks, you can change the tension within the sticks, you can go all through it. Maybe one of these gamers one of these days will use it, so let's go ahead and hop into the action here uh, with Object Gaming going up against Influence here on Search and Destroy Havana. You know, one thing I'm going to call out here right away is a heavy push towards that B-bomb site again and again and again. Uh, it seems more often than not these these maps are designed to favor the B-sides. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, is, I know what you're saying. Is, is that a design flaw when you have only one bomb site that people go to? I'm not going to say that out loud. But yes. <laughs> was that the same sort of thing in Counter Strike? No. Did you notice that? No. There was no no because I I'm biased. I'm not gonna even get into that. <laughs> All right. So you know, moving in, we've seen a heavy push towards B3. Uh, offensive players already on site. We got one top yellow. We got one bottom. One controlling alleyway. Alleyway kind of staying out of out of the way, making sure that he's not gonna be you know taken out at the same time one of his teammates. And that's a really good and smart play. You know, when you're defending this bomb, you gotta stay. Uh, it's, Stay out of out of harm's way. J Cap all by himself. He's down to a one on three. Is he's been able to take down Pluto? He's still being able to push back around. He's got 13 seconds to be able to pull this one off. As it's not really working out in his favor. Able to take down one. J Bone. Oh! oh back in. Takes him out. He's got five seconds. Unable oh! to get the defuse. But J Cap D comes back Slap. in, and he came right into. A brick wall. Wow. If he had half a second longer, you oh, would have got man. that. And that was that was <laughs> embarrassing. Like, I would have set my controller down, you know, potentially walked man. away. And be like, nope, sorry. <laughs> Tough stuff coming in for J-Cap. He, he got the ace that round. Yeah, 100%. That was a beautiful, beautiful round on his half. Too bad, you know, he still couldn't pull out the victory with it. Too slow. So right now, you know, Merck and Rambo... <laughs> See, every time I make a prediction, you know, look what happens. So, first time they're on the offensive, they push towards that A bomb site, you know, trying to throw the opposition off guard early on. Uh, big timer grabbing one, Rambo replying, and Solo picking up J Cap from the top side here and throwing some markers oh. down range, picking up the two piece. Rambo goes down, big timer's left alone. It's a two on one, J Bone and Solo up against big timer, and they do have bomb down, so this is going to be very difficult for big timer to kind of work around. 45 seconds left here in the round as we're on board here with big timer. Pushing over there through that main road, he's going to be going up against Solo and J-Bone. J-Bone, who's um, been able to pick up only one kill so far from that first round. As Big Timer starting to be able to push in here. And he's coming around towards that flank side. He doesn't have a lot of time. And jumping as Solo goes down, that's going to draw J-Bone back around and towards this action. As uh, you've got the bomb has been picked up there. He's got 17 seconds to be able to push in here, get that bomb planted. As right now, one of the things I want to talk about at home, they can use the spectator to be able to see if he's being able yeah, to push in here. Peak. Use a third person peek peeking out, and J Bone is going to be able to take down Big Timer. You may be able to utilize that spectator mode, but right here, watch this J Bone coming from the side to be able to take him out. You can't react quick enough for that. No, that was a solid shot. Just nailed it down, pre almost pre-aimed when he jumped over the railing, had it nailed before he even shot, and you know, ultimately there was nothing uh, Big Timer could do. As right there, 2-0 right off the start here for Influence. It looks like they're going to really do a great job to, uh, coming right at uh, Optic Gaming. As right now, J-Bone, the bomb carrier here for Influence, making his move over here towards that B-bomb site. Spots one, top blue, trying to be able to connect with that headshot, oh. continuing to push up, dodges the uh, frag grenade, but finally getting taken down there by Merck and Big Timer back over into Nameless, going to be left up to Solo, who is the LMS, the last man standing here for influence, watching over there towards that A side, spotted and taken out there by J-Cap as Optic Gaming 
was able to pick up that ground quickly. Yep. As now scores going to be two to one, still in favor of Influence. This is the first one to four here in Search and Destroy here in Raleigh, North Carolina. Changing the pace there really quickly. A four v one is a is not going to happen. I, you know, ultimately, it, it's so difficult to to pull out that victory. And when when bomb goes Fear down, Assassin in, would disagree with you. I don't think that was easy at all. <laughs> uh, I think that was probably one of the most challenging. Uh, sweating, heart-beating moments he's ever had. Cakewalk. <laughs> Cake, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I do this sort of thing for a living, thanks. That's it. <laughs> As now is going to be down to a one-on-three solo all by himself. If the name doesn't say it enough, let's see if he can be able to pull this one off. Bomb planted, 40 seconds left to play. Big timer, J-Cap and Rambo here for Optic. As they're going to be going up against Solo. Solo is right now... Uh, as I'm trying to take a look, trying to take a peek, he's over there towards that wall, the L wall. Yeah, the L wall, cutting across right into cargo, and he's headed directly for B. And, and uh, J-Cap denied that run right across mid. There you go. So you will be able to see that here on the kill cam. Take another look here, J-Cap, watching main road. As you'll see him go ahead and come back across. Great little spot there for J-Cap. Uh, just watching those uh, those cross points and able to take him out. As now, I believe the score is all t uh, tied up now at 2 uh, here with Optic and Influence as Optic is uh, just trying to be able to get back into this game and uh, try to win this uh, next this ser or this map right here to uh, take the series 2-0 to zero so far. Nice nade by Nameless as it landed. It looks like into yellow backside alley and uh, you're making some sign language with your hands. I don't know what you're talking about. As right now Pluto is decided to start making his move over there towards that A bomb site. Oh, the, the A-bomb. See, to me, that was starting to look like something else for a second. I'm not sure. It was a triangle. Okay. That's not a triangle. <laughs> As we've got 50 seconds to be able to get the bomb planted, Nameless all by himself. He's going to be going up against J-Cap, as well as Rambo and Merc. As Nameless pushes back around, he's over there towards that top red, and uh, just going to go ahead and decide to unleash a full clip. Here's a magazine. I'm going to throw a rock at you. I'm not going to win this this fight, and that's going to go as Optic Gaming has been able to pick up their third consecutive round in a row. Can they make it four and take this map? Look at Jcap's score right now, eight and one, holding his team up on this, uh, this landslide right now, uh, coming back from a deficit, three straight wins. He's doing very well right now. Four of those kills, they Game lost that right. round. True. But. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, but, I'm just, I'm just joshing come on. with you. What? <laughs> <laughs> As right now we're here with Optic Gaming here on the offensive side, following on board with Rambo. As looks like they're going to go ahead and head over there towards that B-bomb site. Merc, he's been utilizing that AK-74U. I used to see him use the, uh, the FAMAS a lot more, but I guess he's really become accustomed to uh, the look and feel. As right now, Rambo going to go ahead and get that bomb planted here inside of that B-bomb site. Down to a 3v2. Solo and Pluto here for influence. They're going to have to be Try able to wrap back ninja. around. Oh, Pluto trying to come over that ninja defuse. But the issue is, is they're going to put it all that pressure here on Solo. And Solo's gone 3-6 and six overall. He's going to get taken down. And Optic Gaming winning four consecutive rounds in a row uh, to be able to take that one. Uh, there for Optic Gaming. So now the series is going to be two to zero overall here over Influence. That was that surprised me. Influence came out really strong the first couple rounds. I thought they were able to act. I, you know, honestly, halfway through this, I thought Influence was going to pull out the victory on Search and Destroy. But every time I make a prediction, man, this is why I don't do it. it uh, you know, they came back and they took it away from them, uh, denying them that opportunity. And we're going to push to a potential 3-0 sweep yet again. All right, so we're going to take a quick break here as we kind of gear back up here for the next matchup on Domination Firing Range. Optic Gaming leading so far 2-0 to zero here over Influence.
All right, so welcome back here with Optic Gaming going up against Influence. Our next matchup will be on Domination Firing Range as Optic Gaming, each one of these matches so far have been extremely close with Capture the Flag on Summit going into an overtime. Yep. Uh, but uh, Merck doing a great job playing defensive back in his spawn and then coming back they were able to get that flag cap and being able to pick up that overtime there on CTF Summit, then Search and Destroy. Uh, you had some great teamwork overall. Everybody was hitting their shots there for Optic Gaming, able to pick up four consecutive rounds in a row. That bring us, brings us to Domination here on Firing Range. And uh, yeah, the way this is playing out, we may even see another sweep. I'm not calling anything, but we're going to watch this game. We're going <laughs> to jump right, in board, right on board with Eon Optic Gaming and start off with J-Cap. J-Cap really held his own here in this last matchup, Search and Destroy. I think he finished 9-1, and one, and uh, that just, or 9-2. Nine and, nine and uh, something. Yeah. He finished. He finished uh, he, with some kills and some deaths. I'm not quite sure how many. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but J-Cap, yeah, they all push the C, grab C, very safe move. Uh, anytime you, you're slow and you only put one or two guys on C, uh, you could potentially land a nade in your pocket and kill the whole team. So, you know, they were quick to deny that, made sure they got some points on the board, and now it's a race or a fight, a challenge, a tug-of-war for this B flag, and that's going to tend to be what we see uh, the majority of the time on this map, is just that, that constant push for the center of the map B flag. Big Timer waiting to be able to find that right opportunity to be able to pick up this B domination side, but he tries to do it all by himself. And Pluto wraps back around to be able to take him out. Quickly countered. Uh, Merck able to take down Solo. And J Bone walks into the gunfire of Rambo. Rambo picks up two. Yeah, the nice, nice pre fire uh, through the center there on sandbags and then landing the good nade defending B twice in a row so without that they could have been without B here and now I think Big Tyrant needs to jump on board with B or at least have somebody to pick up the pickup after somebody dies or the nades land on B you gotta have that guy there but Big Tyrant wrapping his way up through top wood uh, jumping over his top of sandbags and now he's just teasing on B hopefully his teammates get there and they can grab this and the marker just missed that nade just landed out of harm's way and they're able to pick up this uh, B flag so now that you, they've got these two points, now it's time to set up for the map control. Map control on this, on firing range domo, is so important. It's probably the most important thing. Kind of go a little bit more into detail on how this map control works. I mean, we know a lot of us understand how Domination Summit work and how Optic Gaming takes complete advantage of it. Yep. So how do you have map control on a Domination firing range? So, you know, spawns are already difficult to control, but you need anchors, and anchors allow you to keep positions and keep spawn points reoccurring. One of those spots is top wood. When you have one guy over in the wood area, you're going to float uh, the rest of the opposition down into the barn fire range, but in order to make that happen, you need to have somebody in this white trailer spot, either back white to deny that respawn. You also need somebody floating uh, throughout the middle. Now, when you push over too heavily into C or too heavily into top wood, you force spawns either back white or back washroom, and then they kind of respond, and it's very difficult to hold on to that spawn point. So what's the main focus? Where are you trying to force them to spawn then? Uh, at the bottom of the firing range, that's where you want to have them because you simply you float them into a choke point, a bottleneck situation, and you can just uh, continuously kill them or at least line them up for a better chance to kill them. 57-23 so far, Eon Optic Gaming, they're just doing a great job. They've been able to maintain two domination sites the uh, majority of the time. As right now we're on board here with J-Cap. J-Cap pushing up here towards the top tower to be able to take a look here. As, uh, they're again, still trying to be able to force uh, those spawns down over there towards that uh, firing range. Yeah, and it looks like they have a bit of a mixed spawn there. They're spawning both on C and in topside map or even back white. Uh, we got Rambo big timer exchanging there, Miss some misfire, miscommunication. But now uh, we're seeing that uh, Eon has now been forced into backside or on the bottom side of this map. So that's that occurrence that you don't want to have happen. As right now, J Cap still being able to push back around here towards that B domination side. Three minutes uh, coming in there. It looks like they're going to go and try to pick up that C side. And J Cap, he's going to get taken down. Pluto and the big timer, but they will be able to pick up that C domination side. As Rambo, I guess he a uh, little bit of jealousy coming into play as he took out uh, Merc. And it can't be about the looks. I, I, I tried to be able to <laughs> counsel them earlier. Uh, oh, well. Wow. So they almost landed themselves into a three-cap situation. That could have 
dramatically decreased their point score right now, but they were able to hold on to A, and now they've got to push out. They got Washroom side spawn, so now they got to float around backside white trailer and take over that spawn points, but they are losing A at the same time. They got to make sure that doesn't happen. Big Timer answers nicely, and now they're going to try to contest into back white trailer, but J-Cap's there, and Merc was trying to hold it down, but J-Bone denying that opportunity there. They almost had B and, and the setup nicely, but wow. I'm not sure how J-Bone missed that. Oh, almost a three-piece lined up so nicely, but Pluto uh, holding on to that kill just in the last couple seconds there. Yeah, as right now, you got J-Cap who's trying to be able to watch over that B domination site here from Top Wood. He's in the perfect little location. He's going to go drop out, though, because he's got his teammate who's going to flush in behind to be able to pick up that Top Wood. Great flow here with Object Gaming. As you can see, he's trying to be able to take a look here from the high ground. Take peeks back around. He's going to try to push in. He spots one, takes out uh, almost. Oh! Finally takes him out. Wow. Takes a little bit more gunfire to be able to take out Pluto. But uh, he's going to wrap back around over here to top ten. Spots two that spawn. He's able to take down J-Bone, pushing back in. As uh, there's a member there in that C-Shack, and he's going to get taken down there by Nameless. He's getting a little bit gutsy there, going for those kills. Nameless jumped out of the corner, taking out one. J-Bone ending his streak by <laughs> killing his own teammate. But now Merck's uh, last man alive to try and defend B, which he does very nicely, picking up the kill on Solo. Anytime you, you throw that nade on B, you have to worry about the pickup person, though, the spotter. And what the spotter's job is to stay very close to the flag, but not on it. In case a flag goes, you have one second to continuation on the flag cap. 12068, 40 seconds left to play here as Optic Gaming has this lead here over influ influence here in the first half. Big timer spotting uh, Solo is going to be able to take him out. As now still the A and B domination site belong here to Optic Gaming. This was their game plan. This is what they wanted to do. They've got a great setup so far. And Big Timer can't Jokes. take out J Bone Prone yeah. as he pushed in there. As now he's got 18 seconds left to play here. Nameless and J Bone going to work there. Pushing in. Still haven't given up just yet. As we'll be able to pick up this B domination site to be able to pick up one point at a time. Uh, so they'll only pick up two out of that little. Uh, region there 136 79 is going to be the uh, first half score 136 79 really good play so far <laughs> you know uh, a couple instances J Bone almost turned the tides there his other teammates just weren't in a position to back up the certain plays but ultimately optic gaming eon optic gaming doing very well and you were talking about the flow there it was it was very I don't know how to say it, but everything just seemed to like kind of flow around. Very the map. synchronized. Very synchronized. The positioning was all in tune and in timing with everybody else. And when it clicked, that you know that first triple cap that landed for quite some time. That you know amounted to so a lot of uh, points being uh, thrown up on the board. And uh, you know we're seeing some nice shots, nice kills. And that last time, a uh, big timer jumped out of top ten. It, it, that seemed like an instance where like, hey, I just shot this guy. Oh, he should be dead, so I'm going to stop firing. And got to make sure those kills land before you stop. No, you definitely got a good point coming in there, but uh, right now, Optic Gaming, they were able to hold on to that A and B domination site, and uh, with that uh, being able to maintain, uh, they were able to keep a 57-point lead there in the first half, so just go ahead and write that down. I already have, so we uh, can uh, stay consistent here on the second half score. That's the difference that we're looking at here as we'll go ahead and hop in here to the second half here with Optic Gaming and Influence. This is the third match of the night, yep. or are we going to see the third sweep of the night? Well, Eon Optic Gaming has got a 2-0 lead so far on Influence. Influence has to really fight back. They've got quite the deficit to work their way back on. they got to hold up and you know secure these triple caps, but we're going to move right into on game. We're going to jump on board with Nameless, and uh, Nameless is a, is a very likable guy. You know, he's definitely around the community quite a bit, and he helps everybody out, and I think that he's really started to establish a name for himself. Nice shot into J-Cap from top 10 to top wood. As right now, Nameless pushing in. He's going to, as he was able to take out Merc. That was a nice play. He just wasn't able to hold on to it uh, as he got clipped from top side of uh, sandbags on wood there. And uh, now Solo's kind of left to himself up here, top 10, trying to hold on to this position. Remember last event, we seen it was uh, Fizzy, uh, Fizzy Fizzer, uh, who was up here with Scavenger, who would just time and time again reload his grenades and keep the enemy guessing, you know, just throwing nades on point, even though it might not be flashing, it might not be contested. He would just 
always have that scare tactic on the opposition, uh, never knowing if a nade's just going to continue to land there or not. As right now we got Nameless starting to be able to push over here towards that B, uh, B domination site. He's going to spot one big timer, able to take down Nameless. Uh, but I believe that uh, Merc was the one that got shut down. As right now they're being able to pick up that C and B domination site. Yep. As they're making the move here over towards this A side, we've seen multiple uh, pop up on the radar. Uh, therefore, Optic Gaming. As right now they're going to go ahead and fall back. Looks like that uh, solo connects there into Merc. Wraps back around big timer. Uh, has been able to take him back on that flank side. As right now, Nameless being able to pick up two. J Cap and Big Timer both go down. As now it's a nine point lead here in the second half. Overall, we're looking at 48 uh, here in favor of Optic Gaming. A strategy that I have not seen used more than I think twice overall is if you come into the second half of a game and you have a significant point lead, why not just let B go? You know, like, not worry about it, but defend it. You know what I'm saying? Like, just surround it and force the opposition to continue to go for it and just sit and wait for it. Maybe use that scavenger. Maybe have that guy who's continuously cooking the nades for B and, uh, you know, just sit back and, you know, let the other team get frustrated. I mean, there's different schools of thought that you can look at. And some of these teams are so meticulous on the idea that they want to be able to do the same consistent thing mm -hmm. uh, through in and out. They try to keep the same strategy. As right now, there's a 20-point lead here in the second half here in favor of Influence. Overall, 37-point lead here for Optic Gaming. As Nameless is still holding on to this top 10. As he's been spotted, he's going to have to be able to back away here as he's uh, trying to be able to make his move. Uh, again, they're just uh, narrowing that lead slowly but surely. Uh, here for Optic Gaming. So they're going to grab a triple cap here as two guys were on A to make sure that went down quick enough. Now Nameless is in a great spot here. You know, when you're in this position, look how well he can float around the map. Unfortunately, uh, J-Cap uh, responding very well to that situation, anticipating that he was going to poke out, try to watch for the spawns, and just uh, nailed the kill. Solo, or, yeah, Solo now is on B here. Oh, nice slice and dice. Big timer responding as well. And uh, one for one, one for one, time and time again here. As right now, 32 points here in the second half. You got Nameless, who we're on board with. Finally, Optic Gaming able to pick up that C domination site, wrapping back over here towards top 10. He's going to go ahead and spam, able to take down J Cap. As now Merc back over there into Nameless. As they need to start to find a way to be able to pick up at least two domination sites here for Optic Gaming, because that lead is just being chopped away. Yep here by influence you know what we haven't done yet is a uh, an astro listen in it'd be interesting to you maybe uh try that out sometime but nameless wow three piece nade slapping them out of there <laughs> making sure that they're not going to get some points here um and wow a six point lead uh here so far here for optic gaming as they have yet to be able to find exactly what they need nameless sitting at 16 and 6 solo at 12 and 6 those two have been uh done have done a great job so far as the lead is almost down to uh one and there it is is now we're almost tied up here with this matchup and now we're all evened out here with a minute 45 left to play uh, timer has been reset the clocks are back to zero and now it's just a fight to see who can break out of here and uh, this is that spawn points that they didn't want to have happen somebody spawned backside uh, a washrooms here or backside red and they denied that very quickly so you know they reacted great but they got to continue to push and make sure that they hold on to these points if they want to uh, win and and stop this sweep as right now, things seem to be a little bit more lackluster so far. As right there, J-Cap was able to take down Solo. As now they're going to go ahead and try to be able to push in here. As uh, they went for that B domination site and got shut down. Yeah, they're just pushing up. They're not really securing the areas. And like when you're trying to get B, you either need somebody topside tin or topside wood. And you have to control white trailer as well. You know, without those points being controlled. They, they, they need to draw in those grenades. Uh, as right now, this game looks like it's going to be going to influence. Yeah. Pushing in. He got Big Timer able to take down J-Bone. 
as right now Solo watching from Topwood taking down one as this round is going to go here to Influence. I'm going to go ahead and call it early. Yep. So Solo doing very well for himself as well. 17 and 8, two catches, three defends. Uh, nameless 19, 20 and 9, and <laughs> uh, 2 and 3 as far as catch and defends go. And then J Bone and Pluto kind of at the bottom, but still doing their part with equal defends and and and, uh, and captures as well. So uh, a really good showing on all parts of this team. Influence denying the fl the fast sweep and pushing this game or into another game as well. That's going to bring us to capture the flag on Hanoi. Uh, you know, so far you know, I mentioned my prediction was three three to one in favor of Optic. Just remember that. Take uh, notes. I will. I will, thank you. I got my post-it note stack over there. Uh, maybe we can get Nexi to write it down. But uh, he, he might be busy. I highly doubt that. <laughs> as, as of right now, uh, the score throughout the series is Optic 2, Influence 1. And that will push us to our fourth game time. Catch the flag on Hanoi as we'll be right back here in just a moment here from Raleigh, North Carolina. All right, so welcome back to the 2011 Major League Gaming Pro Circuit here for Call of Duty Black Ops. Here with the matchup between Optic Gaming going up against Influence. Optic, Eon Optic Gaming is leading this series 2-1 to one, uh, so far. But uh, make sure you uh, check out the NOS Reward Series. So you got uh, get the goods, get the points. Purchase specially marked cans of NOS Energy Drink to get custom limited edition NOS MLG get, get merchandise. NOS Get that NOS swag. Get that NOS swag <laughs> at drinknos.com. Well, you know, we got to plug those uh, sponsors, make sure the bills are paid, and to make sure our bosses uh, don't uh, get mad at us, take us out back, and beat us with a stick. So we're going to jump happen. on board. That really would happen. And uh, are we going back to Search, uh, search and Destroy on Hanoi, or are we going to do something different here, maybe do some CTF? It's CTF. CTF. Always what I like to hear, you know, back into the matchup. You know, first round, they barely pulled out the victory, you know, forcing into overtime. So we're going to see how well they can kind of recuperate off of the loss on domination firing range, see if they can uh, capture back up their elements and pull out the victory here to make this your, your prediction, the 3-1 three, three, lead. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What do you think? Mm -hmm. I think it's going to happen. Did you got money on this game or something? Is that why you predicted? I'm sweating bullets right now. Uh-oh. You didn't sign your paycheck, did you? Um, <laughs> it wouldn't be enough anyway. Okay. <laughs> that big? You going big? Go broke or go home? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm going broke regardless of whether <laughs> I win or not. So, as right now, we take a look here. We're on board here with Rampo, who's already been able to get that first flag pull, making his move over there through that uh, guillotine side. As uh, looks like this is going to be a... Oh! He's been able to get that yeah. flag cap. Nice little <laughs> dolphin dive. I think I taught him that one. Yeah, you were, you were giving lessons, I heard. No, it didn't happen. That was oh, all, okay. um, all rumors. <laughs> Just trying to build a name for yourself. Maybe you're, you're, you're getting too popular. You know, Twitter is blowing up for you. you can't, you're giving lessons to pro teams. Like, what's uh, next? I'm selling merchandise. You're selling merchandise and Remember, and if uh, Merc is down, lose the round. you got to remember that one. Oh, very, very good. And Merc goes down. Oh, no. Uh -oh. Please don't be the case. <laughs> J-Cab now looking through window trying to nail out that kill. He grabs a stun so he knows exactly where he is. But Solo defending his position, coming up big and denying that very moment right now. As right now, uh, three minutes and 36 seconds uh, left to play here. As, uh, I was just kidding. I really don't want to put my paycheck on the line. I wasn't paying attention. I really <laughs> Oh, no. All right, so this is, uh, for those of you that can't see, this is what's on the line. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm not even going to show anybody what's on the line. As right now, you've got uh, J-Cap pushing it. He's going to uh, go and try to be able to hold his own here inside of the uh, the light room. And so far, again, Optic Rambo, he's been able to get that first uh, flag pull and get that first flag capture so far. Pluto getting in a pull. He's going to take it down there by Merc. As Merck is just kind of holding back over here towards that spotlight side over towards the guillotines. Yeah, we got some really solid play going down. That initial flag cap was flawless. You know, they got contested very at the last second, but ultimately that was a clean, clean ride all the way home. And really, whoop, four down, time to grab flag. <laughs> wow. Eat my words every time, I swear. Uh, it's a beautiful thing. I enjoy it. You know, I don't know if we can be friends much longer. I didn't think we were. 
Most most is for uh Every bit of this is for show. Yes. I'm, I'm paid to be here. I'm just playing. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm, I'm going to get ripped apart for that one. You're not very nice at all. Let's get back to gameplay. Two minutes focused, and man. 15 seconds. We're all tied up here at one here with Optic Gaming and Influence. As Optic G Gaming doing a great job. That was Pluto. He was able to get that first flag pull earlier. And then he comes back around to be able to get uh, the flag cap. As right now we're on board here with Big Timer. Big Timer, getting, he's getting taken out there by Nameless back over there towards the spotlight side. J-Cat still trying to be able to push up. He's going to get taken down by Nameless as well. He's made his own domain over there towards that spotlight side. He's going to go ahead and try to hold that one down on lock and try to open the doors there for Pluto. And Nameless, again, this is his region. This is his domain as he continues to be able to push up. As now Solo, he's got the flagpole making his blue move, but J-Cat is able to take him down and nameless again and finally jcap from the grave to be able to take him out there with that frag grenade yeah it doesn't look like it's going to help as that flag's going to take off and grow some legs and those legs are pluto as he heads back the way and i think the respawns are really going to help this flag run so countering it's going to be very difficult uh, mercs now into top top film here but i think this flag's gone as right now you can see him try to be able to make his move he's on the chase Oh, he's able to get him, comes in, slides in, able to get the return. Great job by Merck. Merck just pushes in. He's able to stun him over the top and be able to stun, and be able to come in, get the kill, and get the flag, return, and get the pull, and the return, and the thing as Rainbow got the flag now. What just happened? He, he wanted what I, it was the best with explanation a, I've ever had. Something with a flag yeah, and a return, and then another flag, and then something about a exactly. slide. Exactly. That's what I was saying. Okay. Well, <laughs> you got to be clear. I didn't know if there was a slide or the flag first, but ultimately it went down. And look at this. They overextended themselves. They tried to deny the initial flag run, but Optic responded nice. Oh, he got caught in the back of spawn. That is no man's or nobody's there. They're trying. They're racing for it. And oh, not able to hold it down. That was close. Wow. Close gameplay. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful plays and uh, exciting. Overall, you got to give it up to Merck and what he was able to do there. Really, uh, to be honest, what happened was Merck, he was able to toss over the stun over the building. He stunned the flag carrier. He was able to push in. He spotted him. He took him out and then dove right in. A nice little sliding move to be able to get the flag return and then comes back in. It could have been two to one. It's all tied up at one as right now, We'll see how this one pans out as we hop on board here with JCap here from Optic Gaming. Yeah, headed up into top theater, you know, pretty pretty standard form as you know you gotta control this top side and it looks like he's got somebody snuck in there. He didn't catch him, but now he's gonna try and go for the kill and he's not able to hold it. Solo denies that, kind of a slap in the face, and then back to back, full hands across the mouth, Merc got it as well. As right now we're gonna go and switch over here for Solo. Big timer who has the flag. Uh, here for Optic Gaming, you can see Solo utilizing that uh, flag indicator and trying to find out where Big Timer is. Nameless is going to get stunned and taken down there by Merc as J-Bone goes down. As right now they're getting picked off here by Optic Gaming as Rambo making his move, wrapping back around as Solo gets spotted there by Merc, still pushing back in. As there goes Optic Gaming, another clean yeah. flag capture there for Optic Gaming. It seems like when their setups are set up first, and they're not just going off of that that initial or that uh, reaction flag grab, you know they seem to be able to hold it down. I think they need to slow down a little bit more and just work on getting the setup each and every time, as it seems to work out every time they go for it. Well, Optic Gaming is definitely their their. The beneficiary is the fact that they're very methodical and yeah, making methodical. their moves, and that's what they're all about. As we take a look here, we're on board here with Pluto. Rambo, again, he's got the flag pull. All four members are alive here for Optic Gaming. They're starting to be able to push up and yeah, see if um, Pluto can kind of uh, put a kink in the idea. As no, he's back over in his uh, back over here in the optic spawn. He's going to get dropped there uh, by J Cap. J Cap again, just another clean move. Good little sweep across as they were able to get their second flag capture here for the second half. Three to one overall here for capture the flag here on Hanoi. Great setups, and they're just executing them flawlessly at this point. Had a little bit of trouble the first round, you know, had to tie it up, uh, let let influence kind of grab a flag offhanded there. But three go down again, 
and it's one left nameless last man standing is trying to get this flag or deny the attempt but Merck ah, countering so nicely picking up these kills as Rambo is going to go ahead and try to be able to slide in again now the score is going to be 4-1 to one overall in favor of Eon Optic as here comes Solo, Solo spots one, switches over to the pistol. He's going to go ahead and peek back out and get taken out there by Merck. As now J-Cap has a flagpole. He's making his move. As let's go ahead and see if he can be able to get a flag capture as well. And four. The train has left. And uh, the little steam is going like choo-choo. It's over. There's no way. No way they're going to get these these fly caps here. They're just getting stomped on. I think you just jinxed Optic Gaming, though. Nope. <laughs> nope. I'm holding this one. <laughs> this one, I swear to you, if I lose, clown suit's going on. I'll wear a clown suit. As right now, uh, Eon, Optic Gaming, Merc, it's his go around. That right there is a perfect sign of what's been going on. <laughs> Solo stunning himself. Let's, uh, let's bring the scoreboard up here for everybody to see. That's, that's one complaint we got last round that you know people weren't able to see the scoreboard as much. But I know uh, we'll bring it up here and let you just kind of take there a look. Go. And there you go. The, the story tells itself. Big Timer 12-13. J-Cap 17-13. Merc with 23-13. And Rambo 17-11 and, and four, four flag caps. Amazing gameplay. Uh, overall, team effort, and uh, it's, it's what's expected. Yep. When uh, when the push, wh what's that saying? Push comes to shove. When the push comes to shove, uh, you know, obviously, Eon Optic Gaming uh, knows how to push harder. So they came up with the victory. You know, I was a little worried that Influence. Out there, man. I, I knew, uh, you know, Influence was almost at the heels, almost able to turn the turning points and make something happen here, maybe push it to another couple games. But... Uh, unfortunately, not able to hold it down. They, you know, provided us with some really close matchups, and I think that they're going to have some success in this tournament. Uh, just not very successful against, you know, a, a, a defending uh, champion as well. So, all right. So this one looks like it's going to go to Eon Optic Gaming here over Influence. Uh, the predictions across the board for most people, like myself, was saying that they was going to go three to one, and that's going to be the case here. Uh, here for Eon Optic Gaming taking this one here on Capture Flag Hanoi taking it at six to one overall as uh, that's going to push us into another matchup to come uh, here in just a little bit. Let's go ahead and take a quick break as we we'll right back here with more Call of Duty Black Ops.
This is the team that everybody expected to be the champion back in MLG Dallas. Optic Gaming, winner of MLG Columbus, is certainly a fan favorite. Sporting an all-veteran roster of Rambo, Big Timer, Merc, and JCap, they're one of the most recognized teams in the game. Known as one of the most methodical teams on the circuit, Optic is the originator of many of the strategies we see today. What we're going to see here is going to be a team like Optic Gaming, especially after something like Rambo. Rambo was stunned, but big time are given the cover fire. J-Cap able to pick up two. That's three down. All four are down. But, but Merc and J-Cap, how do you counter something you can't kill? <laughs> You've got no hope here whenever you're playing like a team that is on fire like they are right now. Rambo, backside, hit fire, takes down one, switches to the Python, picks up another kill. Back over here inside that top house. Spam's trying to be able to shut down oh. one. Switches over to the pistol. Uh, Oh, L, L, L. Nice. Optic is looking to stay ahead of the learning curve and continue to showcase their incredible teamwork on their way to the 2011 MLG National Championship. Hello and welcome back to the 2011 Major League Gaming Pro Circuit here for Call of Duty Black Ops. I'm Corey Dunn alongside Eon, Optic Gaming's Merc. I want to take us back a little bit because we're watching the capture the flag there on Hanoi. The game was extremely, extremely tight there in the first half. There was a possibility for influence to be able to come in there and get that flag cap to make it two to one. Kind of just run us through what went through your mind whenever you're on the other side of the map there on Hanoi. I mean, um, it's definitely a tougher side, so you got to play more defensive. And uh, they got the flag out, and I uh, jumped through top movies, got down, and got a clutch kill and got the return. So I was pretty pumped about it. Uh, it was an uh, awesome stun that came over the top. It was a great stun. You slowed him down. He came in, got that great shot. And then the dolphin dive to slide in was just perfect. Yeah, dolphin dive, I mean, it's, it's really hard to shoot someone while they're dolphin diving. So, I mean, it's tough. So when that happens, a lot of people get clutch returns. And that was actually the, uh, you're prob they were probably just a couple feet away and which could have changed the momentum of the game at that yeah. point. Uh, but from that, that point on, that second half, y'all just blew the doors uh, and just really controlled the game. Uh, looking at that as we look at it uh, throughout that whole matchup, it, was, it, was, it seemed as if everything was extremely close. I mean, but your capture of the flag was great. And watching both of those matches, the capture of the flag on Summit, your defense uh, back over the top spawn was just was great overall. Yeah, I mean, we knew that we had to, uh, I mean, watch our flag because they were running OBJ. He was just trying to get behind us, kind of that MW2 style. So on overtime, I kind of sat back and waited for the opportunity. Mm -hmm. And once we got that opportunity, we took it and ran with it. All right, so looking at it in that overtime round, with the, for the first half of the overtime round, what was the idea? Because y'all really didn't try to push up and get the flag right off the start. I mean, we just really didn't want them to get any lucky flags. So, I mean, we kind of took our time and, and knew an opportunity would show. And if we scored the first flag, we would probably win. I mean, that's, that's how we felt. So the confidence is, uh, no, it is, without a question, is there. That's really one of the differences that comes into play with the, the difference between a pro team and, and those that are uh, working their way up. Uh, but uh, let's, we've got our next matchup that's coming up is going to be uh, Eon Envy and Quantic Next Threat. And looking at these two playing styles, uh, we had the chance to watch Quantic Next Threat, and we had some great gameplay uh, watching from them. Uh, but then the games got extremely close against a team like Force. But looking at this matchup, keeping bias out of the uh, you know out of the equation, uh, how do you see this one playing out, and why? I, I definitely think this is going to go to a five-game series. Uh, I think they're both kind of evenly matched. Uh, Next, that's very, very Slayer heavy. Mm -hmm. But once they get down, they kind of they intermingle and fight with each other. Mm -hmm. uh, Envy, I mean, they're definitely kind of a slower paced team. They like to get behind you. Nate Shot and Bob, very clutch players. They get behind you, and they kind of like, I mean, they go fast behind uh, uh, Stains and uh, Dito's slaying power. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So as we look at it, I mean, uh, with uh, what looking at Envy. What would you say is probably their strongest map per se? 
Uh, I would think firing range is definitely their strongest. They take that advantage and they uh, they they score. So I mean, that's definitely one of their best maps. All right, let's go ahead and go take a look here at uh, some of these updates across the board. You got Pool B right there. You can see uh, y'all. Of course, y'all have gone so far. You've beat uh, Influence and Last Minute. Uh, your next matchup will be against Icons Blue. We'll talk a little bit more about that here in a little bit. They're both uh, both these teams. Uh, Eon Optic Gaming two and zero, uh, and Icons Blue is two and zero. Looking at that match, we'll kind of talk about that later on, though. Uh, one thing that I wanted to kind of talk about that is 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 kind of is kind of curious to me, and I, I know that Jcap knows because I've mentioned it before, and he got blown blown up on Twitter. Um, is about his. His switching between his twitch, his his, his twitch. Uh, <laughs> man, big timer have it. Uh, I mean, they play claw, so right. it's very easy for them to just hit it. Um, sometimes they may mess up, and then sometimes it costs us pretty important kills. But uh, they're slow. They slowed it down, especially after all the criticism from last event. I apologize for that guy. <laughs> but I mean, uh, I, I mean, it, it just keeps your hands ready. I mean, it's something. Even Halo, they have the ogre twitch and all that. So I mean. <laughs> the nasty twitch. I mean, uh, I mean, it's in every game. I'm sure it's in Counter Strike. No, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, it, no, it, it, and I, and I understood the uh, the idea behind it and why you do it. But it's it's one of those things that I've seen it affect players more so than not whenever they're in crucial situations. Now, J Cap though, he had some great. Uh, Slaying power there on Havana. He, he got the ace, but he was unable to get the defuse. Um, but it's just the way he was playing through and throughout. It was just, it was just great overall. But we look at this uh, matchup to come because I really like to focus on what's what's at hand and what we're looking at. Uh, Envy and next threat. You think it's going to go into a best of five? I, I but, do. But did you clarify which team do you think it's going to take it? I think it's going to come down to the S&Ds. I think Envy is a really strong S&D team with Stain and Nate Shot, who are some of the best S&D players. So I'm going to go 3-2 Envy. You're going to go 3-2 Envy. I'm yeah. going to go with 3-1 Envy. 3-1? I'm going to go 3-1. I, I, so far uh, throughout this entire day, I've done pretty well. I've actually <laughs> been right about each one of them. Just saying. I'll tell you what. CTF Summit, first map, uh, that's next That's best map that's going to be their best map I, right. I think so vengeance and saints know the spawns very well and they once they put you in that trap sensors just going to get behind you and uh and pull all right so let's go ahead and take a quick break as we'll be right back here with envy eon envy going up against quantic next threat we'll be kicking off on capture the flag on summit so stick around right here on raleigh north carolina here for the call of duty black ops stream Hello and welcome back to the 2011 Major League Gaming Pro Circuit here for Call of Duty Black Ops here in Raleigh, North Carolina. We've got our next matchup coming up with Eon Envy going up against Quantic next. Rent. I'm joined here in the booth with Optic Gaming's Merc. Uh, whenever we've watched you play so far, uh, you've just you've been able to hold down the spawns pretty well. Like back, you're playing some great defense uh, back on some of the matches that we watched uh, there previously before this series. But looking at this one to come, you say that it's going to be three to two uh, in favor of Envy. I think it's going to be three to one coming into this matchup. Uh, but uh, the main focus, what you mentioned, is on Capture the Flag Summit, and kind of clarify a little bit more of why that's the reason. Um, I, I think uh, next threat uh, with their slaying power with Venge and Saints. I think they really hold down the spawns. They control power positions really well, like uh, Top Balk. And um, they don't let you get out of your base, and that's important. And Sensor's going to come around and get the flag, and uh, I think they're going to take it. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, hop in here and see if this is going to be the case here for Capture the Flag on Summit. Uh, here with Eon Envy going up against Quantic Next Threat. As again for Eon Envy, we have Stainville. As well as Dito, Nate Shot, and I'm blanking out for just a moment. Bob. And Bob. <laughs> and you have Astro uh, there coaching in behind and over for Quantic. Next threat, we've got Sensor Saints, Virus, and Vengeance. And their coach, Mystic. Exactly. <laughs> as right now we're on board here with Stainville. Yeah, he did a really interesting start. He ran Marathon so he could get top battle control. So he's going to slow it down here and just stay control, like I said. Please have a nice two-piece. 
Nice job so far. Comes wow. in, be able to pick up three there with that AK-74U. Now continue to be able to push up. Like you mentioned, he's going in with the marathon, pushing in. He's going to spot another one. That's his fourth kill so far there, taking it down. Virus, he's making his move. He's got some cover fire there. He is, he's been spotted, and he's going to get taken down there by Saints as uh, back and forth, the exchange of kills there inside of mid. I really think Stainville should have ran it probably Hill. Was when you run in middle, I mean, it kind of splits the spawns up and it gets you sandwiched. So I definitely think he should have ran a hill that route. He did a great job being able to pick up those kills. And like you said, he was able to get uh, control over that top balcony. And he really did a great job of maneuvering and getting that flagpole. It's just a matter of how you finish yep. uh, there at the end. As right now, we're on board here with Bob. Bob spots one, able to take down center. Going to go ahead and come in here for the flagpole. And he's going through that A domination site. Looks like he's going to go back over towards Summit side. As looks like he's got an opening. The only thing he has to worry about is the flank. As uh, right now there is one member chasing him down. He's just uh, out of reach. And here comes the some opposition there over there towards the Summit side. Nate Shot gets taken down there by Sensor, but the delay is enough for him to be able to get that flank cap. So now scores 1-0 to zero right off the start here for Envy. Like I said, Bob and Nate Shot are very sneaky players when it comes to CTF. They get behind you, and uh, once you get a few down, they're going to pull it, and that time it was successful. As you can see, Bob was back over there towards that satellite room back in the back uh, where a, a domination spawn is. As right now, Bob pushing over here towards that top bout. Uh, and he's going to slow it down here, probably get control of the top bout. Uh, Saints picks up a really big two-piece. Let's see where he goes. As right now, Bob. He spots one. Now he's going to look out for somebody to be able to rotate back around. He's got his teammates who are being able to push back around. He's got some cover fire on the back side. He leaves an opening, and Vengeance steps on through. As there goes Bob, but uh, Nate Shot coming back in there and taking down Vengeance. Saints back into Dito. Here's what you don't want. TT gets you in the spawn trap. As right now, Stainville wrapping back around. He's going to try to be able to get out of here. As uh, he just pushes back in, great jumping shot, taking down Virus with that AK-74U, still pushing in. As right now, they're doing a great job just holding back. They've been able to get that one flag capture so far with uh, now two minutes left to play here in the first half. And TT's really going to pick up the pace and try to get the spawn trap down. MV's doing a really good job coming back to their base and protecting the flag, which is really important. And what you don't see from a lot of teams, they overextend and Kind of like Influence did for us. They tried to overextend and we can't fly flags. He <laughs> <laughs> started that train and uh, as right now Bob pushing up, he's going to get taken down there from the side there by Sensor. As Stainville starting to be able to push up there. Sensor back into Dito. That's two so far. As right now, Sensor's it looks like pull. they're going to be able yep. to get that flag pull as he's heading over there. Uh, he's back over. He's just holding back in there. Yeah, he's staying alive because Envy has control in the middle. Vengeance. Picking up a big kill, getting taken out. As right now, Stainville watching over here towards the catwalk over by rails. As again, Nate shot, he's got the flag and just trailing Stainville uh, as he went down towards those stairs. And Stainville almost able to take down Sensor as that Sensor who's up on that, that top balcony. As now it looks like, again, it's just uh, a good little counter pull coming in here from Nate Shot, just kind of slowing things down. He's back in the back. Yeah, like I said, Nate Shot got behind him and got the flag out. So, let's see what happens here. You got Bob, who's back there accompanying Nate Shot, back over here in this spawn. Now, this is really dangerous because they can throw nades over. And uh, once, once you push up in their base, you spawn bottom middle. So, it's a really easy return. As right now. Uh, so you're saying it's a higher risk, uh, kind of a low reward type thing here. Yeah, definitely. But Envy's all staying back because they know they have that 1-0 lead, so they should be fine for these last 20 seconds. As right now, again, Center, who's been able to get all the way back over there in their own spawn. And so now they're just kind of holding things out. And it uh, looks like they're going to go both play very passive. I haven't seen any real push up. There's Vengeance trying to give a last effort. As this round is gonna, this first half is gonna end in favor of uh, Envy, being able to take that first half one to zero there over next rep. As we look at it, kind of break it down for me a little bit about what happened there uh, in that first half. Uh, they, uh, TT didn't really get control of their base, and they let Bob slip behind them, which you can't do because that's always the type of player he's been, especially with LVG, and. Um, 
you know, sometimes he doesn't put up the slaying success, but he's very clutch and gets behind you, so he did exactly that and scored the flag. You brought up a really good point. A lot of these teams earlier in the uh, in the pro circuit, we watched a lot of teams, a lot of roster changes. And how much of a uh, impact does it make whenever you play with a team? So say, for instance, you have uh, Envy playing against uh, Leverage. They now know how Bob plays. Right. They understand the uh, his, his dotting of the I's and how he crosses his T's. I mean, it kind of hurts because maybe Bob doesn't switch it up and they just kind of wait for him, which keeps getting him killed, and then they push their base, and Bob tries to get behind them, but they slow down and they kill him. And then, I mean, when you play with people and then they switch teams, it kind of gives you an advantage because you know their play style. So... I mean, it kind of sucks. <laughs> <laughs> As right now, they see a flagpole coming in here for uh, both teams. They've on today. Uh, got a counter pull there from Bob. As Saints is starting to be able to push over here towards the catwalk. He's got some cover fire. Uh, he's got stunned out, but it's not enough cover fire. As Stainville drops in and was able to, I uh, believe, return the flag there. As now Bob is starting to be able to make his move. He's going to go ahead and get another flag capture here. Coming in for Eon Envy. As now the score is going to be 2-0 to zero here uh, over uh, Quantic Next Threat. Virus over there in that middle garage. And he's going to get uh, taken down there by Nate Shot. Continue to try to be able to push up here. As now we're back over here on board here with Vengeance. Vengeance pushing in, taking down Dito. Wrapping back over there towards the catwalk. Sitzer's going to be able to get a uh, flag pull here. And they're going to have to start making moves and start getting really gutsy now. Yeah, Vengeance def definitely needs to pick it up when it's playing. He's supposed to be one of their main slayers. And he's not doing too hot now. And that's what TT kind of evolves around is they're slaying and Envy shutting them down. Flag. Yes, right now he, we're on board here with Bob. Bob a, with that AK-74U able to take down Virus and pushes in trying to be able to get a nice little uh, kill there inside of that spawn area. As now uh, we're back over here with Stainville. Stainville spots one. He's going to wow. go and drop. Able to take down Sensor and Virus. Stainville so far, he's 18 and 12. Dito 22 and 17. And then Bob and Nate shot both sitting around 10 and 8. Like I said, Bob and uh or, I mean Stainville and Dito are gonna play really slow and pick up the slang while Bob and Nate kind of do their thing and get flag pulls. And as you can see, they they both have flag caps.